Hi. Every now and then, sellers go crazy and pay you for the opportunity to make money. Of course, it could be a trick. How to find out? The usual answer, do physical sleuthing. Remember oil selling at minus 40 bucks a barrel a few months back? It's now selling at plus 40. Can such a thing, though, happen to stocks too? Yes, it can. Some stocks occasionally trade at a negative price, effectively. Or, to use the technical term, a negative enterprise value. What's enterprise value, or EV for short? It's how much a company would cost you if you had bought all of it, got control of its cash, and paid out all its debt. It's like buying a house where the price plus the mortgage are less than the cash you can find in the kitchen drawer. The calculation is number of shares times market price, also known as market capitalization, plus debt minus cash. Yahoo Finance will show you the EV for any stock in the statistics section. Are there any such stocks? Yes, there are. When I once ran a hedge fund, we used to call it a walking wallet. How can such thing even exist, you say? Well, it often occurs after a company had raised money in the market, then something unforeseen, unforeseen happened and the stocks tanked. Obviously, shareholders who just bought are unhappy, so lawyers usually sworn to sue, which scares you of new buyers and the stock price keep being low. On top, most walking wallets are bleeding cash, which means the company is losing money. But if the cash on hand is more than two or three years of bleed, often someone may take the company over, especially if there's value in the company beside the cash. So why am I telling you all this? Because I want to show you an example of a company selling today below its net cash value. What's more, there may also be value behind the cash too. The company is NextCure or NXTC symbol. It is a Maryland-based biotech company trying to find medications that attack solid tumors. It spent quite a bit of money on R&D, on research and development, then raised money to do tests and trials. And just before COVID hit, insiders bought millions of dollars worth of stock at about 15 bucks a share. Then COVID hit, the trials had to stop, and the stock tanked to eight. Now, why do I use it as an example for a walking wallet? I have at least three reasons for my interest. Although, to be fair, there are also at least three reasons for caution. Let's start with the reasons for my interest. First reason, the cash. At the price of eight bucks a share, market cap is about 230 millions, or about a quarter bill. Not small. However, total cash, net of debt, is more than 300 million, a third of a billion, or 11 bucks a share, more than, the, more than the price. In other words, the sellers are paying you effectively three bucks a share to take the stock off their hands. Remember oil at minus 40 bucks a barrel? Oil is 40 today. The equivalent is next NXTC at minus three bucks a share, what will be in the future. But wait a minute. How fast is next cure cash burning? Not too fast. Free cash flow is minus 23 million bucks per year or less than one buck per share per year. So the cash would last more than 12 years at the current rate. And in these 12 years, anything can happen. So the first attraction for me is being paid to own the stock. What other indications of value do I see? The second is book value. It is also 11 bucks a share. So the stock is trading under book value also. Finally, and third, there's a lot of technology or IP, intellectual property in the company. How do I know? My method, one of many, is valuing IP in taking the last three years of research and development, R&D, spendings per share, as a rough estimate of what the IP is worth. Now, why three years? Because in the modern world, technology begins to lose value after three years of being invented or found out. But if the R&D does have value, which you must establish via sleuthing first, then if the R&D does lead to a viable product, competitors would have to spend at least that, plus marketing, plus admin to compete. So it may be worth a while just to acquire the company instead. That's what happened, by the way, to many of the working wallet post-internet blow-up. In next year's case, the sum of three years R&D is about 67 million bucks or two bucks 40 per share. If it works out, it could be worth two or three times that or roughly about eight bucks a share or even more. To sum up, there are at least three indicators of value for me. Stock trading below net cash, stock trading below book value, and also getting R&D on top if the R&D is good. 
And by the way, of course, there's also a fourth indicator. The insiders buying shares just before COVID hit, which is not their fault. And remember, they bought at two times current price. The question is, can they restart the trials and continue where they left off? Maybe or maybe not. It's up to you to find out. Now, what of the real negatives? Here I can see three also. First of these are the lawsuits. There are dozens of those. At least the 300 million bucks in cash draws litigation lawyers like jam draws flies. Because if they can get anything out of the company, they usually clip 30% as your fee. Can the lawyers make the company pay out for something not their fault? They might. But how likely is this? This will be the second sleuthing task. You'll have to talk to litigation lawyers who specialize in class action shareholder suits. Such lawyers could estimate for you the chance of a company paying out a lot of its cash for an event that doesn't seem to be their fault. Or conversely, what the chances are of the lawsuits being thrown out of court or anything in between. What will it cost you to learn this? You may have to pay a lawyer for an hour or two. And that's, by the way, what Carl Icahn did before he bought Herbalife stock, which Bill Ackman had just shorted heavily before. Before buying, though, Carl Icahn called the best two consumer product lawyer in New York City and asked them what they thought of Herbalife business. Well, the lawyer said, it's kind of skanky, but not illegal, and the cash flow is good. So Icahn bought, while Bill Ackman lost his shirt because he hadn't called the experts first, and I can make money. Now, what if you don't want to spend money on lawyers? You may try to find the right kind of entrepreneurial lawyer that invests in the market too, then he or she may do it for the sport of it and for the chance to buy a stock where the lawyer has a professional edge in seeing what others don't or too lazy to find out. Hmm? So the legal risk is first. The second risk is what is the R&D true value in the company? The, uh, the, the, the R&D per share of about 240 may be worth a lot or very little, depending on how good the company scientists are. How to learn this? Here you could find some doctors who specialize in cancer, preferably ones who are also doing research on the side, which good doctors almost always do, and ask them. And they too may take the stock name as payment. These then are the two first risks. But there's also the third risk, perhaps one that takes the most work to find out. I told you in another clip that I look at the ISS evaluation of the corporate governance quality, which you can also find on Yahoo Finance. Here it is six on a scale of one to 10, that's high. The audit score is two, which means the likelihood of accounting fraud is low, but board and shareholders' right grades are high six and compensation is seven, very high. That is the executives pay themselves handsomely and think of themselves first before they think of you, the shareholder. Yet, the company has good connections, Yale University and Eli Lilly, so the chance of them conning the medical professions is not high, though not zero. How do we really find out if they are honest and have a good credit scientist? There are no shortcuts. You must hit the phone and ask around. Yes, you must be willing to call strangers if you want to do proper sleuthing. It's like a, teenage picking, a teenager picking up girls. They can learn this on the internet. But as Nike founder Philip Knight famously said, no, just do it. In sleuthing too, as in growing up, there is no substitute for experience in just doing it. How? Well, you must ask around about the principles, whether they had problem with the SEC or the law before, and find what is the standing in the scientific community. Ask your friendly doctor to read the published papers. Do they seem real or far-fetched? Remember, stock markets are wily and conspire to take your money but they are also often crazy and occasionally handle you gifts. And to both avoid being robbed and conned and to deserve the occasional gift, you must first buy a ticket. And the price of the ticket is sleuthing work, diligent, detailed, physical work that you must do yourself, not stuff you can pick up freely on the internet. And remember, the above is just an example, not a tip, and is only intended to teach you sleuthing and how to target it. Not a recommendation to buy. That's all for today. Let me know in a comment below what you think of the above. Subscribe to the channel and please tell all your friends so they subscribe too. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.